With the arrival of spring comes the arrival of some of the showiest flowers in my garden. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. You know, when you've gardened as long as I have, you develop certain favorites. And the pink impression tulip is certainly a favorite of mine. You see, over the past few years, I've planted this entire garden with them. Just take a look at how stunningly beautiful they are. Now, if you're looking for some show-stopping spring blooms of your own, tulips are the answer. In today's show, we'll travel to the Netherlands for a look at how these beautiful flowers are developed. You see, the bulbs I grow in my garden start out their life in the fields of Holland. During a visit to this productive and fertile part of the world, I saw how growers produce the highest quality bulb. Next, we'll meet an award-winning florist who transforms these beautiful flowers into works of art. And how could a flower lover come to Holland without seeing the famous Alsmere flower market? Here, they auction off Dutch flowers to buyers from all over the world. Plus, I'll tell you about some of the tulips I'm growing in my garden, and we'll find out why tulips often don't return the next year. Needless to say, this promises to be a colorful show, so stick around. The spring is such a glorious time of year, but you know my garden just wouldn't be the same without the benefit of so many beautiful spring flowering bulbs. Just take a look at my side garden where I've planted over 600 tulips. Now that may seem a bit excessive, but hey, why not? You only live once. Tulips are such a snap to grow. So later in the show, I'm gonna show you how to design with tulips and also some advice on planting them. But first, let's take a trip to Holland where they've been growing tulips for over 400 years. I find the history of plants fascinating. It's astonishing to me that the Dutch took an import, the tulip, and turned it into their biggest export. Each year they ship over 400 million tulip bulbs to the American market alone. Carla Tune, director of the Leiden Botanical Garden in Holland, one of the oldest in Europe, tells us how tulips became so famous in her country. So Carla, this is the gentleman we can thank for bringing tulips to Holland. Yes, that is true. This is Carolus Clusius, as he's called in Latin. And in those days, people were always uh, Latinized their name. Yes. So in fact, he was Charles de l'Ecluse, and he was born in 1526 in uh, the northern part of France. And in fact, he was the son of a merchant and he studied law. Now tell me exactly how uh, this uh, young man who started out to be a lawyer or an attorney got the tulip from Vienna uh, all the way to Holland and started this great craze for the beautiful flower, the tulip. Um, the tulips were introduced by a Flemish man um, Auger Gislain de Busbeck, who worked in Vienna at the court of the Emperor Maximilian II of Habsburg. And he brought tulips back from a mission in Constantinople. He was sent by the Emperor as his ambassador to Constantinople. And he writes, de Busbeck writes in his letter, I have seen in the garden of nobles a new flower that is called Dolibam. And that was not true. It was called Lale in Turkey. He was wrong. Duliban was the hairdress. Right. That's right. The so now... Turbans. That's right. For more than 400 years, tulips are uh, known under the wrong name. But <laughs> you cannot change it. Yes, that's right. Everybody's no. gotten used to it. That's true. And um, pictures were made of it by a Swiss man from Zurich, Konrad Gessner. And those uh, pictures in Konrad Gessner's book Clusius must have seen. That was in 1561. And Clusius was, in fact, uh, what we call a stamp collector. He wanted to have everything. All the plants that he saw, all the plants that he heard <laughs> about or read about. And so he asked Mr. de Busbeck, when he was in Vienna, when 
Clusius was in Vienna to make the first botanic garden there for the emperor. I want to have some of those bulbs, and he got them. He was asked by um, the College of Curators, Curatoren of the Leiden University, the very young Leiden University, to come here to make this garden. And he came here in Leiden in October 1593 with his plant collection and his precious tulip bulbs. Of course. And he started to make this garden, the first garden, uh, for, uh, in the spring of 1594. The fame of Clusius was that he looked further. He was a scientist and he was interested in plants not for medicinal purposes or for food, like in the Middle Ages. He was interested to know them, to describe them, to see them, to plant them, to see them grow. Real science. Yes. So he, has, he had more plants he had a broader view, he looked over the wall, let's say. So many plants were introduced for the first time uh, into cultivation in this garden. Well, I think he would be amazed if he looked over the wall now and saw all the fields of tulips being grown in Holland. Wouldn't he be happy? Yes, he would. I think so. For a flower lover, seeing a pile of discarded blossoms like this can be heartbreaking, but it's actually part of a process that's been going on for 400 years here in Holland. It's all about making bigger and better blooms. The reason why we remove the tulip flowers is that we want to have a bigger bulb. I see. So by taking the flower off, the energy goes into the, the bulb itself rather than the bloom. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. We don't want that a tulip makes seed, because then the energy goes to the seed, and now we want it in the bulb. Right. So as you can see, at the moment, this is the biggest bulb. Yes. But in July, it's three times bigger. This bulb, we can sell. Ah, so from the 1st of May until July, when it's harvested, this bulb will actually get three times larger yes, yes. if you take the flower off. If we take the flower off. Engel, what can homeowners do to help make their tulips come back year after year and bloom like they do here? Yeah, after he is uh, flowering, cut the flower off. So as soon as the petals fade, yes. remove it so it doesn't yeah. make seed. Now and the then the uh, bulb will grow bigger. So next year you have a good uh, flower. Since the Dutch produce and distribute over 90% of the tulip bulbs sold worldwide, this fall, when you're selecting tulip bulbs for your garden, you may very likely choose some that were growing in this field. When we come back, I'll show you some interesting ideas for designing with tulips, both in arrangements and in the garden. We'll also visit the world's largest flower market, so don't go away. It's no surprise that Holland is known around the world for its tulips. After all, they've been grown here for over 400 years. The Dutch are crazy about tulips, and the local florists never seem to tire of their beauty. They're constantly experimenting with new and creative ways to display them. Wilma Meisman has developed quite a reputation for herself as a progressive florist. She's been arranging flowers for over 12 years. Can you kind of describe to me what you're doing here? Yeah, I've uh, taken off all the foliage or all the leaves and I uh, bent them around in this phase. So each flower holds the next one yeah, in, right. in place and you just sort of weave them together. Yeah, right. Now I noticed you were scraping the stems. Yeah. You're doing that for what reason? Uh, so you can see the, the lines through the face, through the glass. Mm -hmm. And in this way uh, also the lines of the stems are very nice to see. And when I let the leaves on the stems, you can't see it this yes, through the face. So right. in this way, it's better to take it off. So the part of the design is being able to look through the vase and see all of those interesting shapes. Yes, right. It's beautiful. It's important to know for viewers that we only have used 15 stems in this vase. And with only a few tulips, you can do a lot. Next, we'll take a look at the flower market where Wilma buys her flowers each day. It's a huge place. They sell millions in just a few hours. Mm -hmm. 
If you walk into your florist any day of the year to pick up some flowers, it's very likely they may have come from this place. It's the largest flower market in the world, the Alsmere Market in Holland. Before this sale day ends, 14 million flowers and plants will have been sold. And this happens five days a week, every week of the year. During the night and early morning, flowers and plants are brought into the auction and placed on trailers. Inspectors examine each flower for quality and length. After each lot has been given a number, they're wheeled into one of five auction rooms where buyers will compete for the best prices. These are Dutch buyers, these are exporters, people who sell on the street and people who own a shop. The clock is the Dutch auction system and that means that it starts at 100, that it starts at high and it's going down. So the light is the price for one flower. You see how quick this yes, is going? Yes, the transactions are very fast. Is it like 20 seconds per transaction? Yeah, it's 20 seconds about the transactions. And we have about 40 until 50,000 transactions every morning. And that's, it starts here at 6.30 and it takes to, until 9.30. So this is only happening in about three, three and a half hours. And 80% is for export and that's half of it's uh, going to Germany and at the moment 4% is going to America. If you've ever had a question about the love of flowers worldwide, the millions of blooms that come through Alsmere every day are proof enough of it for me. Whenever I think of choosing tulips, I always think of color. You know, there's so many beautiful combinations you can put together. You see, over the years, I've had as many victories as I've had surprises. Occasionally, I find that the color description on the label doesn't always match the color I have in my mind. So the next spring when they bloom, I stand back and look at them and go, you know, this really doesn't work. So I learned a long time ago just to take photographs of what's in bloom and refer to those photographs when you're choosing your bulbs in the fall. That way you can repeat what works and you can avoid what doesn't work. When I chose the varieties for this area, I wanted two things to happen. First, I wanted them to all be in the same color family. And secondly, I wanted them to bloom at the same time. You see, my plan was to choose two varieties on opposite ends of the same color family. So I chose Perestroika, which is a rich salmon, and then at the other end of the spectrum, I chose Temple of Beauty, which is almost a fiery orange. And then I chose a variety that met them somewhere in between. I chose Minton because the outer color of the tulip is the color of Perestroika, and the inner color of the petal is the color of Temple of Beauty. And the result, as far as I'm concerned, is a pretty good combination, one I may even try again next year. Much more information about designing with color in the garden can be found on my website. That's pallensmith.com. Combining these beauties with edibles is a great way to use tulips in the garden. As you can see here, I've planted spring green tulip with this beautiful red sail lettuce. I've also used this same tulip with parsley. After they fade, the lettuce and parsley will find its way into the kitchen. Other combinations that have worked for me include white tulips with lemon sorbet violas. Pansies are great companion plants for tulips, and if you're looking for something more perennial, you might try hostas and the strawberry begonia. After the break, we'll visit the largest display garden in the Netherlands, and I'll show you how to keep unwelcome guests from destroying your tulip bulbs, so stay tuned. 100 years ago, if you'd visited a small town in Holland called Lies and asked for a place called Kuchenhof, the locals would have directed you to this old manor house. But today the name Kuchenhof is better known for its spectacular gardens that are visited by over a million people each year. I understand that we have approximately 70 acres here of park, but this was attached to a larger estate. Uh, it was attached to an estate of 2,000 uh, acres. 
And in fact, it all started uh, 600 years ago, where this was a very wild forest uh, with a castle, which uh, only the ruins are left now. But um, the Countess Jacoba von Beieren, uh, a Dutch countess, she owned all this. And this was the part of her forest where there were growing a lot of herbs and there was a lot of hunting going on for her kitchen. And Keukenhof, in fact, means kitchen garden. Oh, and the people now here in the village and the surrounding villages still talk about this site as the Keukenhof, the, the site where uh, the produce to her kitchen was brought. And now look what a beautiful bounty it yields. Yes, it's <laughs> still <laughs> after right. 600 years. It's amazing, yes. The Dutch have been developing their reputation as leaders in the bulb trade for about 400 years. Even today, everyone seems to be involved in some way or the other, whether it's just enjoying the beauty of blooms like these or involved more directly in the bulb industry itself. Two months out of the year, over 100,000 people visit this garden each week to see a masterful display of flowers unparalleled anywhere on the planet painting a beautiful landscape using the country's most famous product. Having flower bulbs in our gardens is one of the easiest ways I know to have a splash of color. After all, the source of all of that color is already packaged in the bulb in the form of a flower, and all we have to do to bring it out is to give it plenty of water and sunshine. Now, if I'm going to go to the trouble to plant tulips in my garden in the fall, I want to do everything I can to keep some ground-burrowing rodent from raiding my tulip bed. And it's easy to do. All you have to do is use a little chicken wire. Once the hole is dug, I cut a piece of chicken wire roughly a foot longer and a foot wider than the hole. Then I fold the sides, creating a wire basket that's six inches deep. Now I just place the wire cage in the hole like this. Now, it would take one mean gopher to chew through this wire cage. Now, if you have problems with dogs or squirrels digging into your bulb plantings, you can take a piece of chicken wire and lay it across the top. Just remember, remove it before the bulbs begin to emerge in the spring. Next, I cover the wire with an inch of a 50-50 blend of topsoil and compost. I add a little bone meal and then place my bulbs about six inches apart and then cover them with the remaining soil. Using wire does add one more step to the bulb planting process, but at least I know these bulbs are safe and safe. Now, when you plant your tulips, there's some things you may want to consider. As a garden designer, I've learned that having a dark background to plant the tulips in front of, or any flower for that matter, really makes them stand out. Now, this dark background can be a fence, a wall, a hedge, or even a colorful shrub. I have some pink tulips planted in front of the dark burgundy foliage of a red barberry. And remember, tulips are most dramatic when planted in large natural drifts. As far as I'm concerned, you can't have too much of a good thing when it comes to tulips. I often hear people say, you know, I love tulips, but the only thing I don't like about them is that they don't come back year after year. They're not perennial. Well, actually, tulips are perennial if you go back to the species tulips before they were highly developed. But they're perennial in their native environment. You see, originally, they came from Central Asia. Now, in the American garden, the reason tulips don't persist and come back year after year with the same vigor they did the first year you planted them is because the foliage dies back so soon, particularly in the South. It's this foliage that reinvigorates the bulb. Without it, there's no chance of it coming back. Now in northern gardens, there's a greater chance of tulips being more perennial because the spring is cooler and longer. But even there, you need to replant a few bulbs each fall to keep the display as effective and beautiful as it can be. As for southern gardeners, well, the modern hybrid tulip is considered an annual. You have to plant it each year, but it's very much worthwhile. Now, if you'd like more information on planting tulips or any other gardening questions, just check out my website. That's pallensmith.com. And remember, if you want tulips in your garden, don't wait until the spring to plant them for a display like this. You have to plant them in the fall. From the garden, I'm Alan Smith.
this garden I dream of a bed of flowers bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us and every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile oh But smile